Hello, my dear friend. Welcome back to my channel. This is Junie's Plan with Me. If you're new here, welcome. And in this channel, I share my bullet journal design and pop up ideas. For May, I'm going with this super purple style, and the theme is picnic and lavender, as you can see. I don't really have lavender flowers available around me, so I use some other purple flowers as decoration. I hope you don't mind. Also, you're going to see me wearing a sweater in this warm spring because that's the only purple clothes I have. Anyway, I hope you enjoy this video and maybe find it helpful or inspiring. In April, I did another flower theme, which is cherry blossom, and I love it so much. If you haven't watched the plan with me video yet, I'll leave the link in the description box down below for you. Okay, at the beginning of today's setup, I like to share some exciting updates in my online shop at junisunstudio.com. For May, you can find three picnic slash lavender stickers, or choose the bundle with the washi tape sheets, daisy week, and subtitle page, or the one includes May title and mini calendars. It's been a month since I opened my own online shop, and I'm so surprised and grateful how much support and love I received from you guys. Huge thank you to everyone who visited and purchased in my sticker and pop-up template shop. Your support means the world to me. Now, without further ado, let's start today's pop-up bujo journey. Here is the guideline version I made to make the structure more clearly. There are mainly three parts of the picnic basket. I'll add more details later, but right now we just need to work on those three basic pieces. The first one is the surrounding four surface of the basket. Dimensions are as labeled, but of course you can scale it based on how big you want it to be. The second one is the handle part. Technically, it should be two separate handles, but I merged them together to make it easier to make and also stronger. If you want, you can just switch it to two rectangles instead. And here I use 20 degrees between the two handles. You can change it based on how you like it as well as the thickness. The third piece is the cover of the basket. The dimension matches exactly the first body piece, except I'm not using the center line to make the folding part. And in this way, it can move more easily. Again, it also works with 3 cm each side if that was you prefer. Okay, with all the basic pieces in mind, here I made a more digital version with designs on it, which is available in my online shop. But if you wanted to make your own version, here's what I added on. The inside of the basket walls, a bottom piece so you won't see the white surface while opening it, four support pieces for the handle part, a belt to lock the cap, plus some butter flowers and wines. It may look a little bit complicated, but trust me, if you understand how my last pop-up mechanic works, this one will be a piece of cake for you. One thing I want to mention is that I print everything on the hard paper except this one because I don't want the whole structure too thick, but it's just a minor if you're making a pop-up card instead of on your notebook. So yeah, let's start putting them together. First thing first, place the basket walls together. And since the inner piece paper is really thin, I decided to use the dark glue instead of the super strong liquid glue, but I'll switch to it later. By the way, I'll leave links to all the supplies I use in this video in the description for you. After putting them together, fold it based on the dash line and glue the end. It doesn't matter which direction you fold because we're going to change it later anyway. The next is the basket base. For most of the pop-up I did, this is basically the base, which is the notebook page in my case, but I don't want it to be blank when you open the cover, so I'm adding this piece. And eventually, we'll glue it directly on the notebook later. Also, make sure it can fold up, don't over glue it. Then for the cover, you can just glue it on the basket, but I actually print another one to patch the back. The bell part is not really right, but it will be hidden and you can't really see it, so I decided to let it be. Before you glue it on, remember to fold it crossingly, because it's gonna be important in the final result. Again, check to see if it works perfectly fold and unfold. And now we're coming to the handle part. 
In order to make it stronger and be able to open the structure when you open it, I add extra support pieces on the back of each legs, and will also be shown as wood texture in the final look. The gluing step is simple, just need to make sure it stays symmetrical. Okay, the basic parts are all done. As I was doing some research on the picnic basket look, I found out that some of them have this belt design which is pretty clever, so I decided to also add into my pop-up, which is not necessary, but just to make it fun. And for the end part, I used dot glue again, so it's not super sticky and I can open it easily. The next is to put some champagne and wine in it. My husband is a huge wine lover, so I'm sure he will be taking more than one when we go picnic. For this part, I actually struggle a little bit. If I angle the wine bottle more, it could work with the inward folding, but eventually I decided to fold it out and place the wine pieces on the left side. And in this way, you can also see the front side while opening the pop-up. Last but not least, butterflies. I always wanted to do a butterfly theme, but never got a chance. Maybe later this year, since I already have a really good pop-up idea about it. So for the plastic holder, I just used some plastic pieces from the packing of I don't even remember what product I bought. But I love collecting and reusing them. Good for the environment, good for me saving money from getting new ones. But I did receive questions about where to get it. And I think it should be available in craft store like Michael's. Leave comment and let me know if you know where to get this material. I glue the butterfly on one end of the strip and glue the other end to the basket. Sorry, I was too focusing on it and didn't realize that I was out of the camera. But yeah, feel free to glue it wherever you want. I just placed two in the back with a V shape and one on the side of the wall. Okay, now it's time to apply it to your notebook or a card base. The basket will be located on the binding line and here I also want to add more elements in the front, so I place it on the top half of the spread and draw the rough line of the blanket. Then use Tumble Do Brush Pen 623 to work on the spreads directly. I was actually kinda nervous because there's no detailed pencil guide, and it actually turned out not bad. I try to give it some curvy feelings so it look more natural, like actually placed on the grass. And the overlay part of the horizontal and vertical brushes automatically give it a darker square, which is perfect in my opinion. Oh, by the way, I know the most common picnic blanket is red, and it's kind of classic. But I'm doing a lavender theme here, so of course I have to change it to purple. If you're recreating these spreads, feel free to choose the colors you like. Now the base is done, let's glue our basket on it. The easy way to do it is to glue one side first and then glue the other side like what I'm doing here. And ta-da! This pop-up mechanic is actually similar to the cherry blossom tree we did last month. Both are using this parallel style, but instead of triangle, it becomes rectangle structure this time. And feel free to leave comments if you have any questions about it. Now the pop-up is done, it's time to decorate the rest of the cover page. This month I spent quite a lot of time on the stickers design which I love a lot. So I'm going to use them directly and I was a little bit worried that you guys would be disappointed that I'm not drawing anything in this video. But I made this decision because I really think I need a break physically and mentally. By using stickers instead of redrawing everything again, I feel so much relieved. But of course I wish I filmed myself watercoloring those drawings. Sorry about that, I'll try to capture some footage and insert here so you can see how I did it, maybe next time. After struggling placing the stickers on the blanket, here comes another struggle of where to put the title. Um, I think I haven't mentioned why I chose this theme yet, right? Well, obviously spring is coming and who doesn't want to go picnic? This is probably one of the best outdoor activities we can do during quarantine, but remember to stay certain distance from other people. I actually just got my first shot of the vaccine last week. If you haven't gotten yours yet, my friend, I hope you can stay safe until then. The whole crazy thing is getting over and hopefully we'll be able to hang out with friends and go on a picnic soon. 
I actually made some adjustment after filming, so you may see the close shot of the cover page looks a little bit different. But yeah, for now I'm happy with it and let's move on to the monthly view page. I'm going to use Tumble 636 to draw the calendars first. For this part, I feel like it's a waste for me to use the whole spreads because I don't really have much event or appointments going on as a stay-at-home YouTuber slash housewife. So for the layout, I decided to only use the left page to make a medium-sized calendar I see. And I just realized that I accidentally draw an extra line. Well, things happen, and in order to patch it, I used the white fixing tape, which is not perfect, but I'll accept it. This is life, you cannot expect everything to be perfect. On the up corner, there is some space left, so I think it's a good spot for the title and the quote. May the flowers remind you why the rain was necessary. I really like this quote and also found it really cute to merge the word May into it. You know, like May the Force with you. If I'm a fan of Star Wars, I will definitely use that for this month. But yeah, no rain, no flowers. Under the calendar, I'm going to use my sticker to decorate the empty space and place a note piece next to it as my social media tracker. Speaking of which, when I released the last video, my channel was around 20k and I said I'll do a Q&A and also hold a 20k giveaway. But I've been pretty busy these days and as I'm doing voiceover right now, we're already at 24k. I am so surprised. And maybe by the time I release the giveaway video, we'll be at 25k. Anyway, I just want to say thank you for liking my creations and the giveaway is coming very soon. Stay tuned for that. And now let's come back to our setup. On the right side, I'll use it as monthly goal and to do. Monthly goal has been pretty helpful for me. I chop down my yearly goal to 12 pieces throughout the year so it becomes more chewable. And the to do section will be used along with the calendar. Also for the tasks I want to finish in this month but haven't given it a date yet. I'm thinking to place some stickers here too, but eventually they said to come back later after rest pages. On the next spread, I want to do something different from my old designs. Well, it's actually a little bit similar to the one I did last September if you remember, but I think this one is more functional. As you can see, I'm making a Dutch door here. I love Dutch doors and it's been a while since I used it on my own bullet journal. And some of you may know I've been using it in the bullet journal I make for my husband every month. In order to keep the top part stable and flat, I save a little bit extra piece on the first page and glue it on the last page so the ugly cutting edge can be hidden. And for the cutaway pages, I won't throw them away either. They are the perfect material for my pop-up experiment because they are 160 GSM paper, thick enough to handle a lot of things. Oh, by the way, the notebook I'm using is from Notebook Therapy and I really like the quality of their product. If you're interested in getting one, I'll leave the link in the description along with my coupon code JUNISUN10, which means you can get 10% off while purchasing and help me with a little bit of failure income. After rounding out the corners, now let's work on the mood tracker on the top section. I really like this design I came up with for this part. As I flip pages for different weeks, I can always see the whole tracking spread on the top. And the idea is to draw in one lavender per day and use different shades of purple based on the mood of the day. I also want to make it more organic, so I'm not going to draw in the black baseline here at once. I know it looks pretty boring right now, but I'm sure it will be pretty interesting at the end. So remember to follow me on Instagram at Juni Sun Xiaomei to find out how it's gonna turn out. Then under it, I'm going to do a happy tracker. Well, I wasn't planning to do this finger snap magic again since I already did earlier. It's because I lost the footage of me making this part. Anyway, you get it. I take two thirds of the bottom space for six habits and on the right side, I'm making the first weekly spread. I really like the layout I used on one of the week in April, which is listing three things I want to do each day to take care of myself. Could be something small like doing a mask, taking a hot bath, or maybe read some manga. Basically, I want to focus more on self-care in May and try to reduce my pressure and anxiety. I also add back in the last column as note for the weekly spread, because sometimes I need a space to quickly write down the tasks I need to do within the week and this is the perfect place I want it to be. After decorating the corner with my washi tape stickers, it's time to finish the rest weekly spreads. 
Oh, I also want to mention that you can switch habit tracker and mood tracker if that works better for you, or maybe use the top section as monthly to-do list. After all, bullet journal is a tool for you to organize your life better, and I just hope my designs can be inspiring for you. As I'm working on the weekly spreads, I want to give a special thank you to my new Patreon members. Right from Karen, Kimberly, Jenny, Chris, Gabriella, Crystal, Tutu, Stephanie, Tash, Decky, Jimmy, and Renda. Thank you so much for your support and love. I really appreciate it. In my Patreon community, you can find digital download of my Buju spread setup, monthly phone wallpaper, chance to vote for the black and white bullet journal theme, and more bonus content. I'll leave the link in the right up corner and the description down below if you want to support me through Patreon. Now we're on the last page. There is only one day in this week, so I'm going to use the rest space for a monthly summary, where I summarize and analyze my work and personal stuff. On the right side, I decided to save it for burn dump, which I usually put before weekly spreads, but this time I move it here so it's easier for me to come back to check what I've written if I need in June. And of course, more decoration on the right hand corner. Oh, you may already notice that I totally forgot to write the dates, so let me do that really quick. And the final step is to apply some washi tapes everywhere. If you've been with me for a while, you may know I didn't really use washi tape during the first year when I made Bully Journal, but now I still to get the beauty of it, and of course, convenience. It just makes the pages more interesting and lovely immediately. It's actually kind of fun to see how my style changes as time goes by, and I also tried different art medias in the past until I finally make sure that watercolor is my favorite. Oh, and also, I think my English improved in the past year. I still make a lot of grammar and pronunciation mistakes, but thank you for bearing with me, and I'm becoming more and more confident because of you. So now I just keep decorating the spreads, and we're almost there. Before the final flip through, I want to quickly share with you guys the bunny stickers I released in my shop recently. A lot of you probably first found out me and this channel through my bunny and moon October plan with me video from last year. If you remember, I drew 31 bunnies for the mood tracker part, and now I turned them into mini stickers. I also love using them in my bujo spreads too. So go check it out if you also want those lovely bunnies to be in your journal. Okay, now here comes the final flip through. Thank you so much if you're still here. Leave an emoji of your favorite food to take if you're going on a picnic in the comments so I know you watch until the end. And since I haven't filmed the Q&A video yet, if you have any questions you want to ask me, also let me know. And that's it for today's video. I hope you have an amazing May, and I'll see you very soon in the next one. Bye!